Welcome back to MKE Gadgets. As you can see, we're over by the Bridgeport Mill, and today's project is a mill stop. So when you have a part in a mill, let's say this part here, this channel, I want a machine, and you put a stop in there, and you find your location, you find your center or your edge, and this way you can take the part out, and if you have a identical part, put it in there, bump it up to that little stop, and then do your machining. And then when you're done, take it out, put another part in there and you can keep doing that. So this is a vise stop. It came with my vise, a piece of steel with a little cap screw in there. So what do you do when you have a bigger piece of material that's bigger than a vise? Well then you, what you use is a mill stop. And let's zoom in on that, you know. This is something that can be bought in various places. So now when I move this stock to machine another one or to inspect it, it bumps against here. And I made this a while ago. It's probably one of the first projects when I got my Bridgeport Mill home I made. And I really like it. And I also really hate it. So it uses two different size Allen wrenches. Down here I use a bigger Allen wrench and for tightening that. And you use a smaller Allen wrench and then you gotta tighten and loosen this one and tighten and loosen this one. You go back and forth between all three cap screws and two Allen wrenches. And I thought, well, how nice would this be if it used one wrench? So let's just eliminate the smaller wrench. Now I wanna make it, so I just use this 3 8 wrench and everything. But I'd also like to make it so I can tighten this up real easily without using an Allen wrench get the job all set up, and then snug it up with the Allen wrench when I'm all ready to start cutting. So that's what today's video is about. We're gonna modify this part right here. We're gonna make two new ones. All the other parts are gonna be reused. So let's go over to the bench and talk about this a little bit more. So let's take a closer look at this. This is just an aluminum plate, half inch thick with two pieces of round tool steel, half inch diameter, 5 16 diameter. This piece here is three quarter inch square. It's got a slit for a binding and two small cap screws. So chips really get packed in there. It's kind of annoying because you got to clean it out before you use it. And this whole thing kind of gets oily and full of chips. So I want to make it so only one wrench works. So the first thing I wanna do is somehow modify this cap screw so I can have enough leverage to tighten it by hand. And once it's all set and I'm happy with my setup, I go in with the Allen wrench. So I 3D printed this prototype. This is gonna be made out of steel. And that just presses on, just presses on there. So now I can have enough leverage to tighten this down. But I won't have enough room for my fingers in there. So I have this piece of scrap aluminum and that's gonna be made into a spacer. It's gotta be drilled and cut off and that will fit in here. That will give my fingers a little bit of clearance. Okay, let's remove this part. Let's just put this back into my scrap part. So now with just these parts remaining, how do I do it so I can use the same Allen wrench here? Now I've been thinking about this project for a while and I pulled out my test indicator and this is for a, a different setup, but that goes on there. And you can put a bolt all the way through, but this doesn't fit on there real well. And again, I don't want a hand wheel on there. I want an Allen wrench. So I took what I learned and I printed some parts here. So you can see here, it's the same cap screw. So I can use my Allen wrench here or down there to tighten it up and with this these will swivel and slide in and out and it tightens up pretty good I got washers in here so it doesn't bind on the plastic and a washer in between so I thought well that's pretty cool but I don't want to just have it out of plastic I want to make it out of steel I went through my scrap bin and I found these two plates 316 that would be perfect there. 
Just got to do some machining on that. And two pieces of one by one by two inches long aluminum. And that will be these two pieces. So let's take this apart. Pull out our pull our drill rod. Now these two pieces look identical, but they're not. So the orange one has a half inch through hole for the cap screw. The red one has a half inch hole through this thickness and then it's threaded half inch 13. Let's go back to the Bridgeport mill and let's make the handles first. So back at the Bridgeport mill, I got a plate like this. This is left over from a previous project. It wasn't thick enough. So I just put this in my scrap pile. This plate will become this in steel. Cap screw goes in there. These four holes are just manufacturing holes so I can clamp it down to my fixture. You see that in a little bit. Center drill and drill all the holes and the center for that cap screw, we're gonna come in with 11 16 end mill and then we're gonna circle and turp with a half inch end mill to get to, get to the size so this will press in there. So the cap screw wants to start in there. I think if I press it in, once this is all finished, I think it will go in real good. If it's a little low, so I can add a couple of tacks on there. So I have my steel plate bolted down two places, and we're gonna machine it so it looks like that. Let's make some chips. Well, that was fun. Look at that. Just like the prototype. All right, I gotta take that out, deburr it, clean it up, and put the other one in there. So we're down to the last two parts. These two are 3D printed. They're exactly the same, except for the color is different. These two holes are different in size. And this one is threaded, and this one has through holes. So I have my stock, which is two inches long, one inch by one inch. So all the holes that get drilled are a half inch off each edge. So I got this set up so I can drill all the holes and just keep rotating apart. So I drew a picture. That's a small hole with a splitting line. And this one gets a threaded hole. That helps keep me straight. So both of these holes are going to be drilled and reamed. 
and that way you have a nice smooth finish in the inside of the hole and that bar will slide in there silky smooth so we're going to center drill drill and ream let's make some chips So with that, I got the half inch one done. Reamed, drilled and reamed both holes. Now I'm gonna set these two on the side so I don't get them mixed up. So the fun thing about designing your own parts is you can make them any size and shape you want. I didn't realize to this moment when I grabbed my slitting saw that I'm not gonna reach that hole. So instead, I'm gonna use a 3 16 two fluid high speed steel end mill and go in there and remove that stock. I'll only be able to get so far on this edge. I'll flip it over and hopefully make it all the way through. Well, that turned out pretty well, I think. I gotta tap one side here and then drill the other side out a half inch. That I'll do off camera. So here I got a piece of stock. Let's say I wanna drill or mill it and I wanna set up a vice stop. Now with my new modified vice stop, I got these nice hand wheels on there and I get close, I tighten that one up and this one tilts and the rod goes in and out. Let's just adjust this a little bit more, move it back, get it close. And there you go. Now I can tighten it pretty tight by hand, but I wouldn't mill it. Voila, one tool, tighten it down to the base and tighten it to the part. There you go. This is my drill vise modifications. Put these little hand wheels on the half inch cap screws and made these two parts. I think this is going to work out real well. Maybe in the future I'll break these edges and engine turn the whole thing. But right now I just want to finish. So this is MKE Gadget. Thanks for enduring this very long video. Please support me by subscribing. We'll see you tomorrow.